If you look at the only games in recent memory that have really succeeded in terms of benefiting cities more than they've cost them, it's because they've involved the private sector. And so that's exactly what we need to do. Hi, everyone. My name is Carson Binda, and I'm the BC Director for the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, holding down the fort for our taxpayer army here in beautiful uh, Vancouver. I'm being joined by my very good friend and colleague, Dr. Jay Goldberg, today. Jay, we've heard a lot in the news lately about the 2026 FIFA World Cup coming to both Vancouver and Toronto and a few other cities in, in the U.S. and Mexico. And you crunched the numbers for us, and you found out that for every minute of playtime, it's going to cost taxpayers in Toronto and Vancouver more than half a million dollars. Can you walk us through those numbers? I mean, calculating the cost of a sporting event per minute of playtime, it's an interesting angle. Why don't you walk us through how you got to those numbers and what they mean for taxpayers here in BC and over there in Ontario? Yeah, for sure. And of course, the implication is going to be for taxpayers all across the country because both Toronto and Vancouver are going to be asking their provincial governments and their federal governments for a heck of a lot of money. So anyone listening is going to have implications. Uh, look, we are sporting fans here at the CTF. We're big Blue Jays fans. I happen to also be a soccer fan, uh, hockey. We love this stuff. But we also look out for the interests of taxpayers. And so uh, we're always asking, you know, is hosting a sporting event worth what it's going to cost taxpayers? I'll give you a preview of the answer. The answer is almost always no. Uh, and that's particularly the case when you're looking at relying on the government and therefore taxpayers to foot the bill, which appears to be the case here. Uh, the issue, especially with FIFA in 2026, is that the games are going to be spread across 16 cities. So all of these cities are going to have to spend a lot of money to get their their um, you know their arenas, get everything ready to go, but they're all hosting a small fraction of the game. So they're getting smaller economic benefit, but a similar cost. So in Toronto, they're estimating that it's gonna gonna cost $290 million to get the city ready to host these games, these five games in 2026. And the cost is a tiny bit lower in Vancouver. They're estimating $260 million. So if you divide that between, if you divide that by five games, each game is played for 90 minutes. Uh, if you do that division, you're going to come out to $644,000 cost per minute in Toronto and uh, about $570,000 per minute in Vancouver. So again, both over half a million dollars a minute. And you really have to ask, is this going to have the economic benefits that outweigh that? Uh, again, the preview is no. We'll talk about that in a minute. But finally, here we've got someone starting to raise some questions. Premier Doug Ford, uh, you know, the province is being asked to pay a third of the bill here. And he's raising questions about whether or not there's actually going to be economic benefit and just what the costs are going to be for taxpayers. So it's good to see that here. And I would love to see your good friend, David Eby, ask some questions about that over there as well. Oh, I'd love to see our premier asking those tough questions, but I don't think that's something uh, taxpayers over here have come to expect from this government. Um, but can you really walk me through why Ford is starting to ask these tough questions? I mean, what, what did it for him? Well, I think you looked at the funding model and look, it's going to cost $290 million, according to the city, to host these games. But the city is also saying that the economic benefit is only going to be $307 million. So that's a $17 million gap. If these games are even 6% over budget and practically every games that have been hosted in Canada and elsewhere are over budget, that's going to be a net economic loss. And then I think Ford is also looking at the fact that you're asking for $290 million directly from taxpayers, but all of the benefit is going to go to the tourism industry in downtown Toronto. So the hotels, restaurants, uh, you know, other tourist activities. And look, we want these areas to succeed. But is it really fair to take almost $300 million out of the pockets of taxpayers uh, and then just funnel the benefit into the pockets of a few businesses? I mean, this is corporate welfare in anything but name. And so I think that's why he's raising the concerns. The concerns are also, and I know you can speak to this uh, with, with the history of the Vancouver Olympics, the cost overruns are the norm. So if our margin is so slim at 6%, 
you can bet it's going to be a net economic loss. And, you know, if it's anything like what happened in Vancouver, it's going to be a big net economic loss. Well, yeah, I mean, thanks for mentioning the example of the Olympics that we hosted way back in 2010. But I remember when we hosted those Olympics here in Vancouver, the cost at the end of the day was 23% higher than these initial government estimates. So cost overruns with these with these big international sporting events are all part of the parcel. They're part of the package. Um, time and time again, government has shown us that if they want to waste money, hosting these big sporting events is a great way for them to do it. And we're already starting to see some of that taxpayer pain that you were mentioning, Jay, over here in B.C. The city of Vancouver, starting this month, this February, is charging everyone who stays in our city overnight an extra $2.50 on every $100 they spend at a hotel or Airbnb or motel in the city of Vancouver. You can't easily find a hotel room in Vancouver's downtown core for under, say, 400 bucks right now. That means for a group of students coming into town from Victoria or, or the Okanagan for the weekend are going to be slapped with an extra 10 bucks in taxes. I mean, that's the cost of a couple slices of pizza and a soda. That's their dinner for the evening. It's crazy. And what really gets me about this is times are so tough for everyone right now for taxpayers, for businesses. I mean, especially in the hospitality industry, they were just hit with years of forced lockdowns and travel bans during the pandemics. Now that they're just starting to get back on their feet, they're being hit with a new tax punishment that's going to turn people away. So, Jay, I, you know, I'm, I'm worried. I'm worried for Toronto. I'm worried for Vancouver. These games sound like a terrible idea, and I'm, I'm glad that Premier Ford is asking tough questions. But what's the situation? I, is it a done deal or is there still time for our supporters to stop this? So it's pretty well a done deal in terms of what cities are going to host uh, the game. So, you know, Toronto will be hosting some games and so will Vancouver. But what's not settled is the funding model. Now, FIFA has this outrageous funding model where all of the ticket revenue is supposed to go to FIFA, even though these cities are going to be spending hundreds of millions of dollars to get the cities ready. Uh, the other thing is, at least in Toronto's case, the $290 million of cost for taxpayers they've laid out, they're looking at taxpayers to foot the entire bill right across three levels of government. But what we need to be pushing for is more involvement in the private sector. If the tourism industry and the private sector is going to be the beneficiaries, of hosting these games, then they need to share in the cost. And I think we absolutely need to be looking at more sponsorships, more engagement with the private sector so that we can minimize the cost for taxpayers as much as possible. If you look at the only games in recent memory that have really succeeded in terms of benefiting cities more than they've cost them, it's because they've involved the private sector. And so that's exactly what we need to do. And so our supporters uh, and everyone out there needs to be pushing both the mayors of Toronto and Vancouver, but also the provincial governments and the federal government, not to commit to funding these games to you know the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars without first ensuring that there is very strong private sector involvement to offset the cost as much as possible. So that's what we need to be pushing for. And as I said, you know, jokingly earlier that maybe Edmonton's the city that benefited. They spent money pitching the games, but they're not going to be hosting them. So they're actually saving some money over there. But look, people in Edmonton will even be paying for these games because both Vancouver and Toronto are asking for the feds to foot part of the bill. So this impacts people all across the country. A taxpayer, no matter where you are in Canada, is going to be affected by these games. And so it is definitely up to you to push very hard to make sure that Toronto and Vancouver are incorporating private sponsorships and getting costs for taxpayers down as much as possible so we don't have a boondoggle on our hands. You're absolutely right, Jay. I think the taxpayers of Edmonton dodged a massive bullet here. Thank you so much for your time, Jay, and thanks for all your hard work exposing the true costs to taxpayers of hosting these games. Always great to look out for taxpayers. Great to be with you.